FC25 is just around the corner, and if you pre-ordered the Ultimate Edition of the game, you'll be starting off with 4,600 points and seven days early access. The points have been a pre-order bonus now for a couple of years, and in previous years, it was pretty easy to choose how to spend your points. You pretty much had draft or packs. However, this year, there is a lot more to spend your points on, and we're going to talk about it. Now, let's start off by talking about how to actually get your 4,600 points. It's incredibly simple. The first time you log into the console version of the game, you'll get your points. You don't get them on the web app or the companion app, so do not panic if you load up the web app in a week's time and your points aren't there. They won't show up until you log into the console version of the game. This is because you have to log into the console version of the game to activate your downloadable pre-order rewards. But when you do log in, in the FIFA points section, you'll get 4,600 points to spend as you wish. Now, in previous years, it was really easy because, to be honest, all we had was foot draft or packs. So you had a choice of just playing the game or opening packs. But nowadays, it's a little bit more complicated because we don't just have the 7.5k packs to open. We don't just have foot draft. We have a few different things. And we're going to talk about it in this video. Now, if you're a good player, foot draft is undoubtedly the most logical solution to get bang for your buck. Because if you can spend 300 points and win the final, you can probably get back way more points in terms of value of packs. So if you win the final and get a 35k to 25k pack, you might be looking at 1,050 points worth of packs back for just 300 points. So logically, it makes a lot of sense to play foot draft. Not to mention, outside of value, you get to choose and try out a lot of different players. The gameplay is a bit different in draft compared to Div Rivals or Champs, but it gives you a nice feel for the game. It gives you a nice feel for certain players, and you get to try out some of the players that maybe you won't have access to for a little while. The caveat is if you're not very good at the game, it makes little to no sense to playing draft with your points because if you're getting first rounded, you'll end up at the best case scenario getting a draft token back to go back in and for most case scenario, a couple of gold packs and a loan pack, which is just absolutely not worth 300 points. These packs often give out absolutely nothing in return. If you're lucky one gold rare and the rest are just consumables, it's just not worth spending 300 points on if you can't guarantee getting to at least the third round of the draft i wouldn't bother the other issue is that a lot of really good players tend to go to draft first they'll go and try and build up their coin balance because the draft packs are all tradable as well so everything you get you can sell so a lot of the pro players and a lot of the really good players will go straight to draft they'll spend a bunch of their points they'll try and play as many drafts as possible and get as many coins as possible because ultimately this game is very pay to win especially at the start of the game so these high-end players need the best players to compete in elite division in foot champions and whatnot or if they're playing against each other to practice for pro events so if you're not great at the game unfortunately draft just isn't for you and there are other options out there that i would spend my points on so a second option is just spending it on packs now there are actually a few different ways to spend your points on packs at the start we'll have a pretty much classic pack section looking like this now you'll have premium gold preview packs premium gold packs premium silver packs and the premium bronze packs now if you're going to just open premium gold packs, I highly recommend opening the preview packs. The odds are sometimes ever so slightly better. Unfortunately, we won't have them in FC24 anymore, but the odds are usually ever so slightly better. And also you can get effectively one extra pack because if you get a bad preview pack with your last 150 points, you can just not open it and open a premium gold normal pack and hope that it's better. Probably won't be, but you can hope. Now, a standard premium gold pack probably discards anywhere from 1.8 to 2.2k coins. If you are lucky and get three rare gold players, it might be 2.5 to 3k. However, they are removing uh, contracts this year. I'm not entirely sure what they're replacing contracts with in packs. Maybe they'll just make packs smaller. So it could affect the discard price ever so slightly. So if we remove contracts from this pack and it stayed the same, you're still looking at about 1.9k because you, you stadiums are 500 coins to discard. Your players are 600 coins and 300 coins effectively. So you're probably looking at an average of about 1.8k discard value, I'd say, from every 7.5k pack. And you can open, with 4,600 points, 30 premium gold packs with 100 points left over. So if we do the maths real quick and we say 30 packs at a 1,800 coin average, you're looking at about 50 to 60,000 coins. Um from getting just discards back if you get the worst look possible so if you're going to go down the premium gold route i would say to the very worst expect around fifty thousand coins back from discards however last year at one in the morning on release night of the early access of the game 
EA sneakily dropped premium gold players packs into the store. We got five promo packs for no promo. There was no promo out. We just randomly got them at 1 a.m. EA started dropping promo packs really early last year, and I expect the same this year. Um, so they dropped 25k packs into the store, which I think are going to be way better bang for your buck than opening 7.5k premium packs. This is my video from last year. Ignore the horrendous trim of me opening the 25k premium gold players packs. Now, the reason why I recommend opening these over 7.5k's of a base level, you just get way more players. So you get 12 players in a 25k pack versus if you're lucky, you get from two premium gold packs, you get what, maybe eight players if you get four in each, but it's usually three in each. Um, so you just get way more players in a 25k pack, but also the discard value is higher as well with it being all players. So as you can see, 4,200 coins there for a 25k pack, which is 50 points more than two 7.5k packs, which if you're lucky, you're looking at about three and a half K. So on a discard alone, if you're getting 4.2K per uh, every pack, you're getting about 20-ish thousand coins. Kylian Mbappe needs your help. I think sometime in the life I'm too competitive. Kylian Mbappe needs you to help him manage his SoRare team and beat Ethan in this epic fantasy rivalry. Go to SoRare using the link down below, compose your five-man lineup and enter the Killing Mbappe FC competition and score 400 points or more for some epic prizes. You can enter just once, but I recommend entering on all three dates, the 13th, the 17th and the 20th of September. And you could win some epic prizes like some signed jerseys, some VIP tickets, some SoRare cards and even meeting Killing Mbappe himself. Have you got what it takes? Sign up to SoRare using the link down below to find out in return for 1750 points for the five premium packs so i recommend if you are going to just open packs waiting to see if ea do the same thing and drop the five premium gold players packs not to mention the odds are just better as well the odds for a premium gold players pack even though they're not going to be massively better they just will be better these will be tradable they'll have better odds and you can open all five for 1,750 points and you still have 2,850 points left over. So it's definitely way better value, in my opinion, opening these than split, spending all of your points on 7.5k packs and getting potentially nothing back. The other thing that I like about these 25k premium gold players packs is that because they're all players, you've got a chance of getting those sort of 80 to 83 rated gems like a Beto who is selling for like 2 to 3k due to an Evo. There'll be a lot of cards that are inflated due to Evos and you've got a better chance of getting them in these packs than you have in 7.5k packs. Not to mention, as I probably discarded a lot of value in these packs, you'll have League and Nation hybrid players in there. You'll have random, I don't know, Swedish players from the Serie A that might sell for an inflated amount because they're needed for a League and Nation hybrid. Um, if you're looking on Footbin, look at the top uh, solutions on Footbin and then look out for those players because people will typically look at the top solution. They won't look at other solutions. They'll look at the top solution and they'll pay an inflated price to get the SBC, SBC done quickly because they've already gone and bought the other players. So that is my advice. And I just think in general, opening the promo packs, if you are going to open packs, I think the promo packs are just better bang for your buck than opening 7.5k packs. If you're patient and you're maybe running an untradeable team, you could also wait a week to the first promo of FC25, which will probably come as it did last year on the official release date of the game. So we can play from the 20th of September. I'd imagine the first promo comes on the 27th when everybody gets access to the game. Like it did last year, we got the Nike Mad Ready promo because on that day, we also got the Essential Starter Pack and the Foundation Starter Pack, which were brand new store packs in the game. They were the first store packs of the year, but they had the most ridiculous odds for being the release day of the game. So this one was 175k or 2,000 points and it had an 89 percent chance at a gold 88 plus rated player these were untradeable but those odds that early in the game were substantial they were substantial odds given the fact that you could only before this really open 7.5k packs all of a sudden the odds were really high and had a great chance of getting some really good players and as you see in my pack we actually had some really good players so i initially packed Verati and Kudnanji. Kudnanji was decent. She was worth a little bit because she was super hyped from a lot of people doing their sort of starter uh, squads on Easy SBC or Foot.gg. Um, but I also there in the duplicates got not only De Bruyne, but I also got myself a Theo Hernandez, who I've just skipped over because, you know, why not? Um, I also got a Theo Hernandez who was worth roughly 50 to 70,000 coins at the time. I had a tradable version in the club as well. So that's one of those players where even though it's untradable, 
that could be your left back for two to three months at the start of the game. If you get a, a player like Theo or a Furlan Mendy, someone that's super expensive and really upper echelon in that position, especially in fullback where we don't typically get super OP fullbacks early in the year, unless you're getting a hero or an icon and you get insanely lucky. You know, uh, Theo Hernandez, a Furlan Mendy, uh, that level fullback in the game will last you a super long time. I remember people using Kyle Walker up until February last year, like literally in foot champions, and he was still capable of beating like the players like Mbappe because he was super quick. So that's the kind of player where if you do get that player, that's your position sorted. The only, like I said, caveat for this is they are untradeable packs. And I think that EA have kind of put us in this bubble and this trap in the last couple of years where they're trying to force us down an untradeable route only. It gives you a lot less control on Ultimate Team, a lot less control of your actual team. Uh, they don't want people getting coins to buy players. They want to force them untradeable only because that kind of... It, it encourages people to spend more on store packs to upgrade their team rather than having the coins by selling certain players to buy better players. EA don't want you to get coins anymore. They want you to buy store packs. They want you to buy FIFA points to buy more packs to get more untradeable cards. And that's the route they've been going down the last couple of years with the game. And they'll still go down this year. So that's the caveat with store packs. Although the super highly inflated odds the better chance of getting a really good card it will be untradeable so i'd maybe recommend going down the tradable route it depends on how you want to run your ultimate team i know a lot of people like challenging themselves and going first owner only going untradeable going with a uh, uh, past and present from certain teams i know that a lot of people like challenging themselves because ultimate teams got a bit easy these days so it's entirely up to you i would recommend if you want the better chance of better players store packs if you want to get coins I would probably just go with the promo packs. They also drop promo packs on the Nike Mad, uh, Mad Ready promo. As you can see, we got 45k and 25k packs here as well. So you could also open those and potentially get something good from those. With 4.6k points at 600 points a pack, you're looking at like, you look at seven packs with a few points left over as well. So maybe you want to wait a week and open 45k tradable packs or 25k tradable packs. It's completely up to you. But if you are going down the pack route and you want to go tradable, the promo packs are just way better value than opening 7.5k packs. I actually did open these 45k packs as well, and they just weren't great to me. I don't remember packing anything like crazy substantial in these packs, but just getting all these players, I would have discarded them because I'm lazy and, and it's, you know, a bit cringe. But a lot of people that are, are good with coins would have probably gone and, and, and sold a lot of the sort of good nation, off league, off nation, good league players for the league and hybrid nations. They would have gone through uh, potential Evo players as well. But I think there's an opposite side to the spectrum, whether it just be draft packs. There's something else that I don't know if a lot of people are thinking about at the moment, and that is evolutions. EA have released a plethora of paid evolutions on FC24, and I think... If you're smart and you're going road to glory only, you don't want to spend a dime on the game and your coins are precious, it might be worth, though it might be a bit boring to some, saving your points completely for paid evolutions further into the game. I mean, we had some crazy Evos last year. We had the Trailblazer Interceptor, Pacey Winger. These were early Evos as well, and I remember them being really, really good. For example, you could take that Politano and make it 85 rated. Now, this was a 1,000 points, so maybe you want to try and hold on to your uh, points for potential Evos later on into the game cycle, or maybe early in the game cycle. Maybe that's what you want to run. You don't want to run, uh, uh, or you don't want to open packs, or you want to run some really good Evos. It might be worth saving your points for that, and that's why there's a few curveballs in the mix when it comes to spending your pre-order points it isn't as simple as just opening packs or doing draft this year there's so much into it but there's more because there's something else we have to think about with our points before we make a decision on how to spend them and that is the premium season pass now the details we know about this so far is at a high level there will be nothing in the paid tier that can't be earned in the free tier the free tier will be essentially what players see in FC24, which is the normal season pass. The premium pass available for coins or FC points, and there'll be no exclusive rewards forcing you to buy. But I imagine it'll be a case of like things like Fortnite, for example, where you can maybe spend to get a higher tier quicker. Maybe you can, maybe there's a nice, I don't know, in this case, there's an informed Romero there. Maybe that's at level 18. You can spend a thousand points to get there or something. Um, that's why maybe you want to think about the premium pass as well. There's going to be a lot of different options to spend your points. It's not going to be as simple as just going and playing draft or buying packs this year. So ultimately, at the end of the day, how should you spend your 4,600 points? It's a very good question. And it's a question that can only be answered with hindsight because ultimately if you get insanely lucky in packs you might look back and think 
I spent my points right. If you get really unlucky and see someone else get really lucky, you might be thinking, I should have done that. But in terms of logic, there are a few different effective, cost-effective ways to spend your points. It solely depends on how you plan on playing the game, whether you're going to be a Road to Glory only player, someone that simply will not spend a penny on the game, which I massively respect, by the way. Uh, and I think it's easy every year. It gets easier and easier to actually build a god squad by the end of the year by not spending a single point. Uh, there's a lot of different content creators out there that run article, uh, Road to Glory RTG accounts and run sort of series around them. And you can kind of see what they can do and what they can achieve with their 4,600 points or with just with their clubs in general. Um, so whether you're going to spend a penny or not on the game... Um, I think that massively impacts how you're going to spend your 4.6k points. If you're going to save them for evolutions, you're going to save, you're going to open packs and get a nice coin boost at the start of the year. Maybe you're a really good player, you're going to play draft. It solely depends on how you play the game, your ability, and how you kind of back yourself. And also, a lot, how much time you've got as well. Because I think a lot of people underestimate time. If you're, you know, uh, you've got a full time job, you've got kids, you've got school, you've, you know, you've got something on your plate most evenings maybe you just want to open packs to get a nice little boost um some dopamine from packing some good players or getting some coins in the club um but if you're someone that maybe has a bit more free time maybe you, you know you, you haven't got plans this weekend or something you want to go and grind the game maybe you want to go and spend it on evolution maybe you want to go spend it on draft so i think there's different factors that come into it i can't give you a yes or no answer to anything because i think i can only give you logic i can give you values and give you uh data and you can go and sort of i can give you you know previous experiences you can go and, and, and make your own choices but i want to give you the tools so you can make the choice that you think is the most logical one for you hopefully this video was helpful for you if you guys enjoyed leave a like down below subscribe if you're new around here thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one peace